All right, so this episode we're gonna move on to doing the diagonal for the main hoop as well as the harness bar. Now, the main thing with doing the diagonal and the harness bar, like as far as fabrication goes, those are easy things. They are basically more or less like straight tubes depending on how your design is. They're just straight tubes with two notches on them. Like that's it, that's your diagonal. Harness bar is another straight tube, two notches, straight tube, two notches, and that's it. Total six notches, three pieces, incredibly easy. The hard part with this is the amount of time taken into actually designing it out and like the thought processes into like what you wanna do. So if you just wanna see like the work getting done on this thing, you can just skip the explaining portion of this video. So you can just like click right here, uh, skip ahead and just see the work being done. But right now I'm actually gonna go into the thinking portion of it because that's basically like 90% of the work that you do um, as far as like where you put your diagonal, and if you're doing a single diagonal, double diagonal, uh, if you're doing offset harness bar, regular harness bar, half offset harness bar, those are like all things to take into consideration, which I'm gonna cover and explain right now. Okay, so they are pretty simple. Here's the rules for the diagonal. As far as covering the design goes, the first thing we're gonna cover uh, is the diagonal for the main hoops. So the two designs that you can basically do is gonna be a single diagonal or a double diagonal, which is basically like an X. So a couple things to think about as far as you doing a single diagonal versus a double diagonal. Okay, so number one, when you're doing your diagonal, the diagonal has to go above your driver's head. That's like a for sure has to go above your driver's head. So when you do a double diagonal, you're going across the passenger's head. Of course, that's the benefit of the double diagonal. Of course, it's gonna overall add like rigidity to the cage, nothing that you'd basically notice. Uh, the main benefit to this is that it's gonna give protection for your passenger in a rollover. Now for me, I'm only gonna be doing this single diagonal design because number one, I'm not really gonna be driving with a passenger that often. Number two, when I am gonna be driving with a passenger, I'm not gonna be pushing it that hard to a level where I feel like we'd be on the brink of rolling over. Now for my friend Nikita, he takes on a lot of passengers and on top of that, um, a lot of time his girlfriend is driving with him in the car, so he for sure wants to have a da double diagonal going in his cage, so that way he can protect himself as well as protect um, his passenger in a rollover. Now I'm gonna go over some pros and cons. So the con of having the double diagonal is that it's gonna be harder to fab up because you're gonna have to do this X in the middle, which means that you're gonna have to be splitting this diagonal tube in half and doing double notches here and then having to line that up straight. On top of that, your harness bar is gonna have to be split up and usually there's a connecting bar in between that people weld. So it's harder to fab. On top of that, this is gonna be adding more weight to your car because you're basically gonna be having this like five, about five foot section of tubing added to your car and the tubing weighs about one pound a foot. So that's an extra five pounds. The next thing is gonna be the aesthetics. I like the aesthetics of a single diagonal versus a double diagonal just because your harness bar gets split up over here and it doesn't meet at exactly the, the perfect center of the X, which that just kind of bugs me that it doesn't intersect at the center of the X because you need to have that at a certain height, of course, for your harness. So aesthetically for me, the single diagonal does it. So when you're doing your diagonal design, you're gonna have to take that into consideration what you want. If you're gonna be having a passenger a lot of time in your car, go for that. If you just want the extra strength for whatever reason, you can go for that. If you wanna have something that's easier to fabricate, um, is gonna shave weight, and then on top of that, um, aesthetically might look better to you, then go with the single diagonal, which is why I'm doing the single diagonal. Either of these designs are gonna pass for tech, and the single diagonal is the only one that's really needed. Double diagonal is just extra. Now that I've covered the diagonal portion of thing, I'm gonna go over doing the harness bars. And here are the rules for the uh, harness bar. For harness bars, there's three different designs for harness bars you can do. You can do an offset harness bar. You can do a half offset harness bar. And you can do a regular straight harness bar. So the benefit of an offset harness bar is if you're looking at the main hoop like this, the harness bar actually extends out the back and then curves back in in order to give you more seat clearance if you're a really tall person. That's gonna be needed a lot of the time if you're running like let's say in small cars like a Miata or an S2000, something along those lines just because a lot of times if you have a straight harness bar, it's gonna affect your seat clearance and you're not gonna be able to have a lot of room for your legs because our harness bar is gonna get in the way of you pushing your seat back. So the benefit of the straight bar is that's gonna be your easiest to fabricate because that's just a simple notch there, notch there, notch there, notch there. It's a straight tube going across, pretty simple. Uh, on top of that, it's gonna be the strongest design as far as the side impact goes. It's a lot better if you have a straight harness bar right here which is gonna take the side impact rather than having a bend in the back of the harness bar because that's gonna be a weaker design. 
The second option is doing a half offset harness bar. The benefit of the half offset harness bar is that it's gonna give your driver the back room that he needs in order to push his seat back if he's really tall. But then um, it's gonna keep it straight for the passenger side, which of course, you, you know, your main concern obviously isn't, you know, if the passenger has enough leg room or not. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna make your cage a lot stronger because you're not gonna have a bend in this bar over here and it's gonna be straight, which means that inside impact, you're gonna have the increased strength over here. The third option is a full offset bar, which goes completely bent around and there is no straight portion on the passenger side. Now the benefit of this, of course, is that uh, both of your driver and passenger are gonna have lots of seat room to go behind them. However, the con to that setup is that it's gonna be a lot weaker design as far as the side impact goes, because again, you're gonna have bends in your harness bar now rather than straight tubing. So fabrication-wise, it's harder and strength-wise decreases. So those are the three different types of harness bars. You have a straight bar, which goes completely across, uh, easiest to fab, strongest design. Then you have a half offset, which just offsets the drivers. You get your driver's back room to put back his seat. And you also get the uh, strength on the passenger side of having a straight bar. Uh, the third design is gonna be your full offset. And that, that one's basically gonna be the weakest design as well as one of the hardest ones uh, as far as fabrication goes in order to do that. So really quick, something that you want to take note is that uh, when you're doing this, you want to try and have everything connect to one point. So you would uh, want to have this side hoop connect right where this rear support is, have this rear support diagonal connect a little bit higher up to the main hoop in this junction area, and have this uh, main hoop diagonal connect also where the rest and everything else is connected to. So that's going to have everything at one node, which is going to make it an extremely strong design because everything ties in together at one single point. Now, as you'll notice here, I have everything split up. And so you're wondering, well, if that is a strong design, uh, you know, why did I split it up like that? For the main hoop diagonal, the reason I pushed it out over here, of course, is for my head clearance so I can have my seat actually push back, not hit my helmet on it. Um, this rear support diagonal connects down here just because when I try pushing it up over here, it essentially turned into a notching nightmare. So I'd rather have a nice clean solid notch rather than a notch with big gaps everywhere being bridged by welds, which is gonna be an overall weaker design. And then as for the side hoop, I had the side hoop connect over here because had I had it going over to the rear support, it would have been going directly over my head again. So uh, getting rid of my head clearance. So I'm just letting you guys know that this right here technically isn't the strongest design. Although I opted for this design rather than having everything connect at one place, because this is what I would prefer as far as headroom goes, rather than just having like everything connect to one point. And this is still a plenty strong cage. So now you can see what I mean by like the design portion of it. it takes up most of the thinking because really the rest is fairly simple once you figure out what you're gonna do. Now to move on to the work, uh, it's a fairly simple process. The first thing to do is get the angle of what my notches are gonna be at. So I just do that easily uh, by hooking up a piece of string in place of my uh, diagonal. And then after that, I just get the measurements by using an angle square and uh, just figure out what notches I need to notch it. Now I'm gonna do the lateral brace for the main hoop. So I'm just using string to mock everything up. Right there, it's gonna meet at the exact section as the door bar is, because the strongest cages are basically ones that have everything meeting up at one node like that, so that's gonna be good. For the top here, I have it moved away, basically as far away as I possibly can from the center of the radius, as far as the rules allow, which is six inches from the center of the radius, so that's about it right there. The reason for that is to try and gain, again, as much head clearance as I possibly can, because if you look down here, it, I mean, it, it's running almost directly over my head if I have my seat, you know, pushed back pretty far. So if I, ha if I actually have the tube coming over and intersecting with the rear supports right there, I most likely end up hitting my head sometimes. So I'm trying to have it as far away as possible, but of course I got to stay within the rules. And the rules state within six inches of the center of the radius. So right about there. Of course, you want to leave a safety zone just in case the uh, guy who's teching your car, you know, is a little bit uh, weird with his tape measure. It's also gonna make the notch a lot easier because I don't have to do a double notch to intersect with this tube. Instead, it's just gonna be right here, which means less gaps and better welds. So it's gonna turn out good, I think. So with the string set up, I can just take my square right here. See, there's a, there's a point at the bottom that says pivot right there. That's where the string is gonna to have to go. So you're gonna put it like that. Make sure it's flush against your thing and then read off the marking. When I did it, it was about in between 42 and 43, but closer to 42, so I just called it 42 degrees. 90 minus 42, right? Get whatever the measurement is, so that would be 48 degrees. And then input it into the little notching program on metalgeek.com, print out the template. See? And then I just slide these over the tube. This one is a 41 degree one, that's for the top. This one right here is a 48 degree notch, that's for the bottom. 
So now I can have that right there, take an angle grinder to it. As always, notch it done. Okay, now as you can tell, I got the notch done over there. The notch done at the top. It's kind of just, you know, overcut, obviously, so I can trim it down perfect. But I got this door bar that's intersecting at the same position, right? And I want them to both meet at the middle. So what I'm going to do is get a 90 degree, right, angle notch sleeve like that. And I'm going to put this 90 degree over here and slip it over. And I'm just going to cut out this one side as if this was a 90 degree notch. Because it's going to be intersecting this two over here. So it's basically a 90 between these two. And then uh, there is, uh, I believe, 48 degrees is what the notch is for this one. I got a 90 degree template on top of my previous template. And this side right here is the only one that needs to get notched. So I'm just going to follow this line and then trim it around. And then also notice that this right here is flush with the end. So that's kind of like the unit measurement. You just make sure this is flush. That's how far you know to take this template in. And then also everything else lines up. So yep. Okay, so as you can see, all the metal's repaired. I got that 48 degree notch with another 90 degree coming in at the side. Up here, it's going to be a 41 degree notch. Okay, and this is basically the, the end of this right there is six inches away from the center of the radius. So that plays it safe with the rules because depending on how you interpret the rules, it could be six inches. Maybe they're counting to the middle of the tube or to this end of the tube, but basically the safest way to play it is to have all of the tube within six inches. So that's exactly how I'm building it. And this setup essentially is going to give me the maximum amount of headroom allowed within the tech rules according to playing it safe. Okay, as you'll notice at that bottom corner, Part of the seam for the door bar right there, as you can see, is gonna be covered by this tube. So what I'm gonna do first is weld this little section, maybe from here to there. And I'm gonna weld that, so that way it's fully welded around. Then when I put this over top of it, I can continue the weld all the way around, and uh, not a single part of the tube is gonna be unwelded. So you can see right there, Lay down a bead from right there to right there. So what I'm going to do is I can put the tube over it now. And I know that this section of the door bar is actually welded in place. You know, that way it's, everything's continuous. So there we go. Tacked in now. Looking good. Fairly even right there, which I like. All right, if you're looking from like the radius right about there, you can see the end of the tubing is right about six inches. That covers the main hoop diagonal. The next thing to cover is gonna be the harness bar. Now, the harness bar, I'm just doing a straight harness bar design because that's all I need um, as far as my seating position goes, so I don't need an offset bar in the back. Only real thing of concern when making the harness bar is the angle at which your harness is gonna be at. Now, that's a big issue when you're dealing with spinal compression. Um, in an accident. So the level that you make your harness sit at with the harness bar pays a, plays a big, big role in uh, whether your car passes tech or not. And the angle that that's set up and where you have your harness bar placed at completely depends on what seat you're running, what seat bracket you're running, and then also the driver in the car. So uh, for example, Osbo's Scion TC, he actually used from a different driver. And so they had to weld in a different harness bar in place for Osbo to use the car because the other driver had a different harness bar location. So again, so when you're making your harness bar, you need to make sure that, you know, whoever's driving the car is there test fitting it with you. Um, they're using the seat that they want to use and that they're using the seat brackets that they want to use and they're sitting in the position that they're going to be driving the car at. Otherwise, if you go change that setup, you may not be able to pass tech just because all your angles are going to be completely off now. As far as my setup, my ultimate setup is going to be a, a Bride Vios 3 Lomax as well as the uh, Bride Lomax brackets or maybe the Street Faction brackets which should go just as low as the Bride brackets. And since I currently don't have a Bride just because it costs about $1,300 that setup, I borrowed Nikita's genuine Bride setup. So I took his Bride seat, put it in there so that way I could get a mock-up um, with that full setup in that car so that way when I go to a full Bride setup, I'll be able to have a fully uh, legal passing harness angle. And, uh, and I don't base it off a setup that's gonna, you know, end up changing. And very similar to how I did the main hoop diagonal, I just set up a piece of string. And using that piece of string, I can get the angle of my notches as well as the rough height of where I need to put my harness bar to get the angle that I want. Okay, so I've ran some string across, basically mocking where the harness bar is gonna go. I've also laid out some string across the seat. So as you can see there, that's right about level. And that's the lowest position of the seat. So 
In formula drift, the max angle you can have is zero degrees, and then after that, you can only go more negative. So at the lowest position, which is gonna be here, it'll be um, zero, right? So that means I can drop it as low as possible. And if I raise the seat, it'll be going for the negative angle, and that's still allowed within the rules. So basically, set it to lowest possible, level it out, and then after that, you, whenever you raise it, it's just gonna drop within the, the negative area, which is still allowed within the rules, so you're good either way. Okay, so this is the situation we got mocking it up right here. Got both them done finally. I got it so the harness sits at about um, seven and a half degrees is what I calculated at, which is good, because it gives me room to go um, down some degrees as well as up some degrees, so that's perfect. So what I have is I have a string attached to the back of the roll cage, and it's measured from the base up, and the base up over here to be the same distance, and then based off of that, I can then use a measuring tape, right, and then eye it and make sure all these are even, which they are, and then with that, I can tack it in place. So what I'm gonna do now, just prep the metal, and then tack it. Three forty-eight a.m. And I just finished this. And I finally got the seat in there. Yeah, I put a piece of tape there, so you can see the angle that my harness is basically going to be at, which is just barely negative. It's just under level. The reason I did that again is because the seat can still go one position lower. And on top of that, I don't want to make it completely level, you know, because then you can't get some variety. So right now, it's right in between like where I can have it, so I can move it up or I can move it down. Oh, took forever, but so much, oh dude, it's so worth it. Like you get that feeling, you know, like I redid this design and I took hours, literally hours thinking about it and notching it. And it was just like, it's definitely worth it. Now it's like, I can just look at it and be like, yeah, it's, it's, it's how I want, you know, that's exactly how I want it. Kind of just like with the roof bars. It's like, that's exactly how I want my roof bars. Like, this is exactly how I want my diagonal. Dope. That ends this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it and, uh, you know, learned a thing or two about doing some stuff. So if you want to get something done by a shop, you know, you have more information about it. Or if you want to do something yourself, you have more information about it. And, uh, you know, if you want, go ahead and subscribe. Um, I have merchandise available at offbeatgarage.com. Uh, all my shirts right here are going to be done by What Monsters Do. So you can go to whatmonstersdo.com. You can go look at a shirt, whatever you want to buy from them. Um, and then you use the coupon code LEDRIP, you get 15% off. The next episode is going to be doing the rear, um, basically a double diagonal or X brace for the rear supports. So that is a pretty cool episode. And it'll help you guys out if you're going to be doing a double diagonal for your, uh, your main hoop. Just because the way you get the two bars lined up perfectly straight, it's going to have some techniques available in there. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. I do that a lot, dude. Oh boy. 4.51 in the morning right now. Alright, let's get started. <laughs>